Right, so what oh um I haven't um I haven't managed to uh, let's get rid of that. Uh oh, no. Gone and let's have a look. Hopefully my computer is running. Honestly. Oh, hello. Um, cool, blimey, all those. Uh, right, you wrongins. Welcome into the body of the Kirk. Am I going to be able to see that from here? Hang on. Uh, yeah. Uh, need to make an executive decision too sweet, so to say. Uh, To what? Turning into a shandy ringer. Um, to uh, Nigel Green. Um, I, I know you're going to get this on catch up, so um, hope you enjoy it, young sir. Sorry you couldn't make it. You were uh, still in Benidorm, sunning your white bits. Andrew James. Uh, interesting. I wanted to mention that. Um, Uh, what else? Uh, uh, International Organ Day. Am I allowed to get my organ out and give it a play? Uh, thank you for that, Andrew. Oh, it's on the 20th. Oh, it's oh, days away yet. I've gone Saturday. Saturday, always a good day to play with your organ. Uh, Andy Turner. Hello, hello. I'm a sexy beast. What's this I read that Stephen Mulhern and Josie Gibson are together? Do you know, we've got to mention that. First off, you're wrong. Um, thank you, Andy. Yes, we um, yes, we will mention that. To uh, Stuart. Evening, Adrian. You're wrong. Evening, Stuart. Uh, Tocker 69. Good to see you're in the body of the Kirk. Tocker 69. Uh, evening, Adrian. And all you utter, utter wrong uh, Rusty Mouse. Evening, Rev. Don't trip on your cassock. It is a thing. I've got to wrap it around my waist sometimes, otherwise I will trip over it. Me cassock before you start. Um, uh, new news. Harry's application to appeal his quest for security has been denied. So now he's going to appeal again to a higher court. It's the king's. They're the king's courts, the king's councils. So is he one of taking... Oh, can you imagine? Big Willie style. Just says here, Dad. Because we can confirm. Here, Dad. Leave it to me. I'll sort ginger spherickles out. Oi, Harold. Come here, mate. And take your necklace off, you girl. Because uh, I think all that's going to go on. It's definitely going to go on. Me hibiscus is a bit too warm. That's what I'm blowing on. It's not a good thing to start blowing when I'm live. Eh... Uh, from the moderator, be on your best behaviour. Evening congregation, plenty of room down the front. Six to a pew, please. There's a gag there somewhere, but you know, budge up. Let people in, <laughs> otherwise they'll get upset. GB Patriot, evening Adrian, you're wrong. One. And uh, Neptune Gamer made him his own, so he's not using mine. Neptune Gamer? What's mine's? Well, what's the saying? What's mine's me own. No, what's yours is mine and what's mine's me own. Cool, blimey, it's going to be one of those nights, I think. Uh, Terry Walkfit, evening members of the congregation. Who was the best looking man in here till I came in? Should have got the spec savers, Terry. Uh, to Rusty Mouse, moderator, a bit of a squash. Yeah, Fat Bottom Girls. What a great song by Queen. Um... So, shall we? Yes, of course we shall. Uh, plenty in the in the body of the Kirk this evening. And uh, you're wrong and smash the likes. How are you, man? Said a spokesperson. Uh, so, we're going to talk um, 
Thank you, to, thank you to Andrew James in the comments. Um, I, I did mean to write it down, but I, I did forget. But Andrew, thank you for that about uh, the ATMs and cash. Told you, have you seen the price of gold? Oh, ho, ho. I told you six months ago because somebody said, "What do we do? Buy an allotment and put all your money in gold." I think was the answer I gave. But we're going to start with some showbiz rollocks, some proper showbiz rollocks, because. Uh, I've told you, it's this facial re facial recognition camera malarkey. Just grow a beard. Or get yourself a beard. And then they won't recognise you. Obviously, I've had to say this now. Can't explain why. I've no idea why. None whatsoever. Um, hopefully, that hibiscus will uh, cool down. We're going to talk about the, the Trump, the Donald, the DJT. And uh, his showbiz trial. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. I mean, who knows what he's in, in um, being tried for. And they're not sure he's going to go to jail on this one. But there are others lining up. I mean, look, we're only, where are we? April, May, June, July, August, September. We're six months away from the election. And they absolutely categorically need to stop Trump that's the whole grift the the, the whole shtick but <coughs> we will talk about that in just a little while uh hang on uh Mick Rosh evening all evening Mick welcome to the body of the Kirk squeeze in six to a few uh all retro on his bikes has smashed it I do hope he means the likes um Neptune Gamer can confirm Mick Rosh is me dad has been turning in for months on my account. He now has his own. Enjoy the stream, everyone. Oh, Neptune Gamer and uh, and Mick Rosh, welcome you both. Um, we are uh, a family channel, so we do enjoy family attendance. But just remember, I'm the one with the dog collar on. Honestly, I've got so many filthy gags that I could... I could, I could, but I won't, because <laughs> I'll end up in jail before Donald Trump. Um, we're going to talk about uh, Sir On Me Ed, Davey, because he surfaced. Well, I never. I did. It's an age thing. Uh, so, Sir Ed Davey has surfaced. Uh, Jimmy Carr. We'll talk about him because he's on Netflix. Honestly. I'm out of kicking the spherical's that's funnier than him. I watched some of it. I, 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 the, the new Mrs. Allen is away. She's uh, she's working, so I needed something to take my mind off it. Uh, no, not off that. Off stuff. Having the whole bet to myself. Whoa, what a luxury that is. And I, I watched some of that Jimmy Carr thang. I would rather slide down a razor blade using my sphericals as a handbrake than watch that man. He's just not funny. He's not. Anyway, talk about him because I was just lying there thinking, oh, Jimmy, mate, what are you up to? All those millions. Give me some. I'm funnier than you. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Holly. Not and the Ivy. We'll talk about uh, Holly, what she's up to and what's not going on and what is going on and what's stuff. Um, we'll talk about smacking. Yes or no. Not in the Frank Boff sense. But kids. Because I was listening to, uh, to Hell BC this morning on breakfast. Nick Ferrari. Good man. And they were talking about it and he had some... Professor on. Now, I, I don't know about you, but, like, there's no common sense in these idiots. None. And Nick was just sort of, you know, giving him an easy time, and this professor was, um, you know, hey, well, I'm a professor, I'm this, that, the other. And Nick says, so were you smack when you were a kid? Oh, not the question the professor wanted to hear. He, he kind of, he kicked off in a in a sort of, herringbone smoking jacket kind of way uh, and he went oh it's got nothing to do we're talking about this and I thought aye you're wrong you've been smacked 
and you've you've been taught a lesson and you thought, do you know, wait till I'm a professor. I'm going to stop smacking for the whole world. So we'll talk about that. And then, oh, the Royals, man, another. An I mean, it's only three days since I mentioned them on Sunday Live. And what have they done? Harry, that boy, to quote an oft-used phrase, is as thick as pig shit. He's like, I mean, I, I, it defies my, A, logic, and I've got a little bit, tiny little bit, somewhere back there, and it's like, Harold, what are you doing? Here, can we not get William in to, in, in, in to be the king? Get Big Willie style in, because it'll sort these two Montecito morons out. We're, talk, we're going to talk about the royals. We're going to talk about Harry. And forgive me for swearing, but he just don't half wind me up. Because it's this entitlement. Oh, I can do whatever I want. Include riding a horse that's too small for me and use me spurs and draw blood. You utter. Thinks he's a hard boy. He's not. I mean, doing that to a horse is just... You can tell someone's character by how they treat animals. That's why dogs um, will kind of show themselves to a human being and they know dogs are not stupid. Cats, they have servants. They, they don't have family. They just have servants. So you've got no chance with a cat. Um, except... Now, this is the kind of AI, just a little interjection, if you don't mind. This is the kind of AI that I love. So somebody somewhere is sitting on his uh, PlayStation going, do you know, I want to know who's the hardest animal in the jungle. I bet it's a lion. And somebody will have said to them, nah, try an elephant. And they're like, oh, man, the stupid elephants just got trunks and stuff and big ears. So somebody somewhere in AI has decided who would win, a lion or an elephant. And the elephant absolutely romped it. So the elephants have great memories. And they know. And, and, and I love, just call me a soft old tart, but I love watching these sort of animal videos. I'm not like a, a, a daft cat man, but... These stuff where you show kindness to animals and they love it. They absolutely love it. Who's that? Uh, Stuart, yeah. An elephant never forgets. That's why I've got such a good memory. I'm making my own gags up. It's entertaining me. Oh, it's in there. I'm not saying it out there. It's in there. It's entertaining me. Um, so, elephants. How do they pack their trunk? Uh, so AI, you see, that's what we need it for. We don't need to know how, how many, whether there's aliens in the universe. We just want to know who's going to win, an elephant or a lion. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Uh, so that's kind of what we're going it, to, it, it's just going to be a stream of consciousness tonight. A stream of consciousness. And hibiscus, of course. Uh, Tower Block Tracy's in there. Oh, uh, Hopefully sooner rather than later. What are you? Tower block, Tracy. What are you up to? Um, Chris Mundy just realised the little light bulb at the bottom of the screen isn't a logo on Adrian's shirt. Chris, man, that's me logo. Theatre of the mind. Light bulb, brain, going on. <laughs> Hang on, I'm moving all the time, Chris. <laughs> How could you miss that? It's like, it's not me nipple or anything. Oh, sorry. Say that out loud. There'll be people going, oh, I say, Adrian, we're going downhill rather quickly this evening. Aren't we? Can't we? Shan't we? Um, and also, uh, if you just want me to kind of lob this in, because there's nothing better than a good lob. Ask a tennis player. Um, rich boy. Rich boy. I didn't watch PMQs today. I just thought, oh, dear. I mean, how dull is that going to be? It's just, you know, usual suspects. It'll be uh, Rich Boy Sunk and uh, Keir Starmer. Is he scaring you yet? He should do. And seemingly, there's all kinds of machinations going on in Labour Party HQ. Oh, Angela Rayner. Angela Rayner. Angela, you utter wrong. And there's even more investigations going on. There's even more. 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 
So anyway, do you know this Rwanda bill? You know, uh, Rich Boy had a bet with uh, Piers Morgan. How it Piers? Thousand pounds. Thousand pounds to get these flights off to Rwanda. And Piers went, all right then, all right. Didn't put a time frame on it. That was Piers' first downfall. So Rich Boy thought he was going to get the Rwanda bill through this week. It's being dealt another blow. Another one. The Lords want an amendment. And it means that the Rwanda bill might not get passed until next week. So if you thought you were going to see all these aeroplanes taken off, unlike Dubai, all these aeroplanes taken off and going to Rwanda, not happening, not happening. And Rich Boy's um, just, uh, well, spitting his dummy out, I would imagine. So what should we say first? Yes, should we? Uh, does, um, does the body of the Kirk uh, like uh, a beard? Now, not these um, cameras that if you, uh, as you can tell, baby bottom. And the good guys, all the good guys, are clean shaven in the movies. Uh, all the bad boys have got beards. And I don't mean in the Sophie Wessex sense. I mean beards like facial growth. And so if you want to be facial recognition, I'll get to it in a minute. I'm trying look, I'm trying to dance around and make sure that I don't put myself in trouble. Um, so if you want to avoid facial recognition, grow a beard. That's for the girls as well as the lads. Grow a beard. Because the facial recognition cameras, although Apple iPhones can, like, if you've got glasses on, they can, oh, hello, I can, yeah, I can, uh, yeah, that's you. So you can get into your phone. Pull that beard. Ooh. Anyway, should we talk about a new beard that surfaced? So I understand that Josie Gibson has been seen walking hand in hand with a Mr. Stephen Mulhern. That was your response, the same as my first response. Really? Oh, Josie, I, I, you know, I love him a little bit. I, I, I'm a little bit in love with him, but I don't think he loves me. You cock's not big enough, woman. Oh, sorry, I was talking apples. Cox was Pippins. Sorry. Being distracted. So, it's like they think we're thick, man. Can't. There's six gags I can't use. Uh, I can't name anyone. <laughs> so, um... Oh, do you know, I was going to give you the name of someone and all of a sudden there's a news alert with that person's name just appeared on my iPhone. No such thing as synchronicity in timey-wimey wibbly-wobbly, according to Doctor Who. So, I wish Mr Mulhern and Ms Gibson, like her guitars, uh... Is it lavender? Because it's that time of year. Uh, is it? Well, they've both got the same managers, man. They're all <laughs> managed by the same, the one that, um, Schofield. Yeah, them, they manage. I, I did, uh, wasn't uh, Josie Gibson managed by Davina McCall when she first came out of Big Bro? But Stephen Mulhern's part of the ITV posse man with uh, Aunt Deck. I said Deck, not Duck. And Quack. So they're all like ITV only chooses talent from that particular stable. No horses. Let's not talk about Ian Tree and uh, the Grand National. Although I will say that, uh, just as a little aside, parking that for a moment, um, the. So there's a load of comments on the videos. I mean, there's literally thousands of comments on the videos over the last week or so. And one of them um, was, uh, what was the horse that won the National on, on Saturday? Um, uh, somebody commenting said, uh, hang on. 
Oh, Napoleon Bonaparte. Is she? Alexa? Oi! Alexa! Oh, just making sure you're right, you tart. Um, so the the winning horse on Saturday... Um, 2024 Earl of Sefton Stakes today. Ottoman Fleet placed first. Astro King placed second. And High Royal placed third. Who asked you? Sorry, I'm not sure. I didn't, and there's only two of us in this room, you're wrong. Know your place. So, um, Rich, my Alexa kicked in. Um, Napoleon blown apart. Uh, oh, yes, Peter, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I am Maximus. So somebody commented on one of the videos with Maximus in their username on, on YouTube, and I thought... Uh, I am Maximus. Is that a horse running at the, on the National on Saturday? And literally, I would have just put a fiver on it. Wouldn't have got much back, but imagine. 50 years of trying. 50 years of hurt, as the footy song says. So what was I telling you? I was telling you, uh, Beards, uh, yeah, they're managed by the same people. Uh, Josie says I'm a little in love with him. Oh, bless you, Josie. Because um, you know what the game is now. Just just get yourself in, get your ugly fizzog in the in the the dailies, in the the mainstream media, legacy media. Oh, look at that! Look at that coverage. I mean, J Lo, she's in there nearly every day, mind you. She's getting a kit off. And have you noticed how the girls get their kit off? They're wearing see through. Sheridan Smith. No way. Who's Chris Mundy? Russell Crowe is playing Glastonbury this year. He's not on the legend slot, surely. Or is that uh, Lulu? So I thought I'll stick a fiver on. Maximus, that's a great name. I am Maximus. Maximus Aurelius. Um, and I didn't, so I lost again. Uh, Terry Walkfit, uh, Josie Gibson, bit of a girl. Be like, <laughs> Terry, yeah, wrong one. Um, blimey, Qatar says it's reassessing its uh, negotiating position between Israel and, uh, and Hamas or Iran. And um, I've done enough in the, the videos of the last few days because literally there's only so much information, but we're getting a load into the videos. This, uh, look, it's really easy to see. We know, and if it's the first time, if you're a first timer into the body of the Kirk this evening, budge up, get in the pew, and then just type on your phone, I'm a first timer, so I can pop your cherry. Uh, uh, and if you've never seen the live before, or the theatre of the mind, welcome to the body of the Kirk, and let me pop your cherry. So... Those that have been here regularly, some of them, some people have been here since the very beginning. Mad, I tell thee, mad. And we said we were first out of the blocks. The um, Neil Cunningham, thank you, Neil. Uh, who's first? Uh, Rich, own up. Who's the Battenberg? Vir oh, yeah, who's the Battenberg virgins? Do we have Battenberg <laughs> virgins in the body of the Kirk Rich? How could you do that? This is this is. This is revered. This is sacred ground. And you're talking about Battenberg virgins. Funny, funny, funny. Um, Rusty Mouse, the nuns of Battenberg. Oh, yeah, or the guns of Battenberg. Nuns of Battenberg, I think that got quite a ring to it. Um, if you are a first time, grab a slice of Battenberg cake and join in. Um, I think you might need to um, rephrase that. The oh, Bovril. So where was I? Laughing. That's where I was. So... Uh, you'll know that in the Middle East, it's a it's a banker's war. Well, it's uh, OCG Biden and uh, OCG Netanyahu, whose son's in Florida, because obviously he doesn't want to get called up into that storm. Uh, and it's about the, the gas and the oil. It's about energy independence. So Israel wants the gas and the oil. It's under the Gaza Strip. They've um, them and the Americans, the Israeli and the Americans, have built the port. Oh. Uh, for aid to help the Gazans, uh, yeah, we're just building the port so we can bring it over from Cyprus. 
bring it over from Cyprus, and then um, we can offload it uh, to the Garsons. So Israel build this massive road. So oil, gas, that's the priority. Second, Bibi Netanyahu wants to be Ben-Gurion, but he's not got a chance because Ben-Gurion was a proper freedom fighter. So Ben-Gurion has got all kinds going on and uh, they want to build, and Israel have done since the 60s, they want to build the Ben-Gurion Canal because the Suez Canal is built on shifting sands. But the Ben-Gurion Canal is going to be cut through rock at the Gaza Strip. So what nobody's discussing, and you've got all these propaganda peddlers, I'm just saying to anybody who's, you know, first time into the body of the Kirk, gas and oil, so is uh, Ukraine, Russia, in the Black Sea, so the Turks, the Bulgarians and the Russians want the gas and oil out of the Black Sea. Hang on a second, who's got a nice pair of Belgian buns? Tower block tracing, I might have known. Always flaunt it, tart. Uh, so, oh, Pauline Makepeace, no. Got to be. As somebody said, can it be carrot cake again? No, it's got to be Battenberg. <laughs> Pauline, if I tell you, honestly, if I tell you, you might just switch this channel off and never come back again. Um, the old overall, yes, I know, but I prefer a bit of cherry. So um, if if Pauline has her cherry cake, that's that popped. Uh, and um, do we? I mean, we're in the body of the Kirk this evening. Do we? I mean, we can lay a tray out for the deposits. Adrian, stop that, because it's not. It is funny. It is funny. Um, so, gas and oil. I'll get back. I'll get serious. I'm being serious. Uh, gas and oil and the Ben-Gurion Canal. So forget everything else that you read in the newspapers. It's all flotsam and jetsam. It's just all made up. So what happened the other night was Israel bombed uh, one of their places in Damascus. And Iran turned around and went... So there's 10 million Israelis and there's 90 million Iranians. Who's going to win that particular little skirmish? Uh, right. Uh, right, Israel. Uh, have a bit of this. So they, they chucked all the, the drones over and chucked some missiles over. And what they did chuck over was, um, was it the Nevitim Air Base, where the F-35s were being stored that bombed the, their building, the Iranian building in Damascus. So they just bombed that particular airport. So, and also, have you noticed how, uh, thank you to the anonymous emailer earlier, did get the email, did laugh, you're wrong. And have you noticed how all these pictures, there's no sort of portrait, um, sorry, that's portrait, landscape. There's no landscape mode in the pictures that they show you. It's really tightly cropped. So that they, so you can't see all the airplanes that uh, the Iranians bombed, and they were saying, "Oh no, never got through. No, no, ninety-nine percent of all the missiles never got through. We've got the Iron Dome." And the Iranians are sitting there going, "All right, lads, you think you're clever? Well, we now know what it takes to bring the Iron Dome down. So have a word with the Americans. You know, OCG Biden shoving as much dollar into his pockets as he can go." And uh, we'll just sit back. Because if it kicks off, we know now how to bring the Iron Dome down. And we know how to get our missiles through. So d don't you worry, lads. You know, kick off as much as you want. But we're sitting here just laughing our caps off. And it doesn't matter what propaganda you see in the newspapers. Oh, this and that. And, and rich boys saying, oh, I think we need to show some restraint. And David Cameron's there like, anybody want a deal? Anybody want a deal? Anybody want to buy some uh, jets? Oh, that'll be Israel then. Uh, Israel, do you want to buy some? I've got some dirt cheap. And then all of a sudden, it kicks off in Monmouthshire at BAE Systems. There was an explosion there. And everybody's gone, no, it's not terrorist related. Well, that hasn't been ruled out. And nobody's gone, oh, it's this and it's this and it's this. They've all backed off going, oh, this is getting a bit serious now. So we've gone from Beards to Battenberg to Missiles. It's like Zig Zig Sputnik. Remember them? Love Missile F-111. <laughs> There's a song. Anyway, um, can I just, uh, can I just, 
Who's that? Who's that? Andrew. Andrew, it's not. It's not. Um, my wife is scared that World War Three will kick off that because everybody is like, what's World War Three? You go down to the pub, just going to have a little snifter and everybody's like, is it World War Three then? No, the pub's still standing. The only thing and the only reason why America and the UK and France are saying to Israel, lads, Bibi, take your time. Don't react. Respond if you want, but let us know first. It's because there's too much money in Israel for the UK, France and America to lose. And Iran's got to... Um, oh, by the way, so I'll tell you this. And again, you've kind of chucked me off my running order. There's nothing worse than being chucked off at the beginning of a life. So the... What was I going to say to you? Yeah, you know that Israel has something called the Samson option. And they've also got something called the Masada option. Now, the Samson option is a nuclear strike. And if you've... I've been to Masada in Israel, and it's breathtaking. The fort is breathtaking. But there's a story behind it. And I'm sure that the Israelis are sort of using that as a guide for the, the story. And Masada is thus. You can climb it. You can get up at some ungodly hour. It's like half three in the morning or something. And you can walk up a path up the side of Masada. And you can get to the Masada Fort, which is now obviously disused. You can get there and you can watch the sunrise come over the, the mountains in Jordan. It's breathtaking. It's one of the most beautiful things you will ever see in your life. So I, I went to, uh, I've, got a, I've got bad vertigo. So uh, I go to the top of Masada and I have a wander around. It's a massive fort and it's, it's just breathtaking. But you've kind of got uh, a mountain that Masada is on top of. And you've got one side where you can go up the path to Masada and watch the sunrise and, and get in there before all the Japanese get in there with the cameras. Or you can go from this side, and that's what the Romans did. So basically what the Romans did to all of the uh, Jews in Masada is they starved them out, and the Jews committed suicide. And what the Romans did was they had a path on this side. So this side is steep, this side is a little flatter, and they, they built it up so that they could literally just walk into the fort. They starved the Jews and the Jews committed suicide. A bit like the fort in York, whose name I can never remember. Um, they did exactly the same to the Jews in, in York about a thousand years ago. But the Masada story is, uh, is thousands of years old. I think it's BC. And if it was ABC or AD, it's going to be around just before or just after. And because the Romans were occupying uh, Israel at the time. So... They have the Samson option and they have the Masada option, I think. Hang on, where's Karen gone? Let me have a look at that. Uh, Terry, Samson brought the house down, the Philistines, suicide, but a knockout blow to his enemies. Oh, interesting, Terry, interesting. But the Samson option, yeah, that would be it. Don't be cutting a man's hair. No, it's just not on. Uh, and the Masada um, protocols or option is roughly the same. Um, the Israelites would uh, just hunker down and you would have to starve them out of Israel, which would take quite a while. Because they've got, in Israel, they came up with, with, and this is just off the top of my head, Israel came up with the best and first desalination plant in the world to take the salt out of the water to make it fresh water so that Israel would always have fresh water. That's what I was told ages ago. Clifford's Tower, Terry Walkfit, thank you. Clifford's Tower in York, exactly the same thing as Masada. Um, they, all of the Jews in Clifford's Tower committed suicide because they were, um, they were being attacked. They were in the tower, committed suicide. I, I think maybe one was left, but maybe not. And, and some people kind of go to York and revere Clifford's Tower. It, it, it is the scene of a mass suicide. Same as Masada. Anyway, so you, um, gas and oil, Ben Gurion Canal. Forget everything else. That's what it's about. And the Ukraine Russia war, it's not even about Ukraine. Ukraine's just going to, they're not going to win it. They're never going to win it. Um, that's why um, you know that there are certain companies, Raytheon, BAE, Systems, BlackRock, 
those kind of companies who sell arms and armaments. Um, the reason why NATO is the way that NATO is, the, these companies that do arms and armaments need fresh markets to go into and sell their wares to. That's why NATO wants to expand and is continually expanding, seemingly. Uh, Jim had concern, vodka shots in the eyes. Blimey, Jip, party around at uh, Jim Atkinson's place. Uh, tail block, Tracy, uh, Desmond Decker, with his hand on fire. Ah, all my ears are all right. Ah, yeah. The Israelites. Um, can I just point something out to you? You know, I've said to you for, for months on end, if it kicks off, we, we, Gen Z is going to protect us. There's the gun. There's your rifle. There's the uniform. Off you go. Front line. Oh, no. No. I'm a YouTube influencer. No, I can't do that. Right. There's your, there's your rifle. Off you go. Well, it's all right. We'll put you back in the, in the back of a C-130 and we'll just take you out there. Don't worry. You'll be out on the front in half an hour. No. No. <laughs> do you know there's a new generation coming? I'm not joking. You know, we've got Gen Z. Well, I don't know whether you've worked this one out, but when you get to Z, it's the end of the alphabet. So you've got to go to E. Generation A. And do you know what word they are using for Generation A? Alpha. Now, Generation Z ends in 2024. Generation Alpha starts this year. And goes on for, I don't know, 18 years or whatever. And you just, you can't. Yeah, Chris Mundy, Erse. Yeah, that's a Scottish equivalent. Um, so you just, you, Gen Z, they, they just, they, they can't. They just can't. There's another half dozen gags that I can't tell. But can you imagine Gen Z trying to protect me and you? Honestly, the better dole out incontinence pants, because I would just be wetting myself every day. Oh, I don't know what to do with this gun. Which end do I use? Put your uniform on first, you dippy tart. Oh, I do. I'm Gen Z. So, the Samson option, that's why they're all, um, they've all got twitchy bums. Biden, rich boy, the Germans and the French, they've all got twitchy bums. Why? Just in case uh, Netanyahu goes, ah, oh, stuff this for a lark. Just ping over a nuclear missile. That'll sort them out. And that's why they go, well, I, I think that we should all show some restraint. I think we should all, you know, we shouldn't do that, should we? It'll keep us warm for about 10,000 years. Lauren Taylor, Terry Walkfit, a pals regiment. DC, there's your gun and tin hat and two slabs of Battenberg. Off you go. Brilliant. Can you imagine? We should buy shares in Battenberg. We'd make a fortune. Make all of Gen Z and Gen A take a, a little Battenberg cake with them. They'll go to the front and go, what are you got the Battenberg for? It'll, uh, it'll make me brown stuff smell nice. So uh, when I soil my pants, because... Somebody's attacking us. It'll smell nice. Honestly, we need to stop the live now. I'm not going to stop laughing at that all night. DC, you're utter wrong. That is just going to make me... What have you got the bad mood for? I do love doing these lives because you're funnier than anything I see on the telly by a country mile. So, uh, Gen Z, it's uh, 2010 to 2024. F 14 years. I'm kind of squeezing them in now. So, uh, Gen E. Generation Ars. Um, Martin Sullivan. Gen, Gen Marzipan. Oh, they've got to take the Battenberg with them. Can you imagine um, telling your, uh, your colonel, uh, uh, Major, uh, want some Battenberg? What are, boy, what do I want Battenberg for? It makes your brown stuff smell nice just in case, you know, you soil your pants and the uh, and the uh, the enemy capture you. Oh, I say. Can anyone smell marzipan around here? <laughs> Fancy a slice of Battenberg, sir? Do 
GP Patriot reckons on one of the lives you should have a slice of Battenberg, Adrian. Well, do you not know we did this we did this video and the, the Scarlet Pimpernel was every credit. Um where 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 I was just saying thank you for a million views. And uh, <laughs> I just had this Battenberg appear from bottom of the screen. Oh, we laughed for weeks. We did laugh for weeks. So Let's just get rid of that. I want to get uh, I want to get onto the serious stuff. Otherwise, you'll have me talking to you yeah, for like three or four hours. Stop that. Length has never been a problem. But three hours? Um, let's talk about... Uh, where's my number two? Oh, yes. Can we talk about Donald Trump? Because I'm really, really, really excited to talk about this. I mean, the Battenberg was funny. Um, but this is it. This is just... You can't make this up. If you'd scripted this, they would have gone. I mean, if you'd taken it to Archetypes and went to Meghan and Harry, hey, hey, look, I've got this really good story. It's about uh, an ex-American president who goes to, um, is tried in New York because New York is a is Democrat central. And, uh, well, uh, you know. Oh, no, I don't. No, would one kind to explain, kindly explain. Well, it's like this. So it goes that uh, we don't know what he's on trial for, this ex-president. Um, but the tabloids are going to be ram-packed with this. Every single piece, every page, every just everything. I mean, it's going to be jam-packed. So at the moment, all they're doing is they get, he's kicking off. The Donald's kicking off. And <laughs> he's like, I can't go and see my son, Barron's. A graduation. I just think that's not on, lads. How are you, man? It's Baron's graduation. You've got to let me go. And the judge, who, do you know, the judge um, contributed to Harris Biden in 2020. He gave the current President of the United States and the current VP of the United States, he donated to their election campaign in 2020. Oh, man, look. Will you shut up? Good. Um, so they're sorting the jury out at the moment. They've gone through about 50. You're no good. You're no good. Have you got any allegiances? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Off you go. Fox or Oscar. You're not stubborn. Off you go. So they've gone through about 50 of them to try and find 12, seemingly. So at the moment, they're trying to sort the jury out. And it'll take this week and next week because you know what American courts are like. Now... What I'm about to tell you is going to make the red tops bulge. And there's nothing better than a red top bulge first thing in the morning. Um, so what this case involves is porn stars, playboy money, playboy bunnies, hush money, illicit sex, cover-ups, dodgy lawyers. I mean... Literally, if somebody says, can I, like a um, uh, a 60 second pitch or a, a, a lift pitch, right, go. Um, well, it's going to involve an ex president of the United States, and um, well, it's got porn stars, it's got Playboy bunnies, it's got uh, hush money, illicit sex, and cover ups. They'd go, here, here, that's too far, man. The public are never going to believe that. Well, honestly, it's a true story. It's not a true story. They're never going to believe that. So tell me about the porn stars and the Playboy bunnies. I mean, yeah, I get that the lawyers are wanting their moment in, in the limelight. But it's, I mean, the stories and, and Stormy Daniels, Stormy's, Stormy, uh, yeah, I've, I've heard some of his songs. Uh, loved his waistcoat, British waistcoat. Not wrong Stormy. Okay. Uh, Stormzy and... The presiding judge is a Juan Macha. Spanish, evidently. Um, and he donated to the Biden-Harris campaign in 2020. You can't make this up. You can't have somebody who's got a vested interest. He's supposed to be impartial. Man. Oh! I can't. So Nicholas has dropped a little 
truth bomb in there. Can't, can't, still alive. Um, so this is what the, the, the whole trial is about. And I'll, I'll kind of give you the, sort of an executive summary. So if you were the president of the United States, you'd be like, right, 60 seconds, tell me what it is. Tell me what's going on. Tell me what the options are. So um, Donald J. Trump in 2006, who was married to Melania at the time, uh, had a dance with a porn star. Now, if it was a, on a monetized video, I'd have to say corn. That's why everybody, it's taken me months to work out why everybody's saying corn in videos, because it's porn, but monetized. So you can't use the P word, you can only use the C word. Did I say that out loud? So Stormy Daniels has uh, had a dance with uh, the Donald. And then, on, this is back in 2006, so he, his missus was pregnant and he was, uh, was having a dance. And, uh, and then on the eve of the 2016 election, uh, Trump's then lawyer, Michael Cohen, paid Stormy £105,000. Just because he felt like giving it to her. And the money, you're wrong. So it was to sort of, like, keep your gob shut-ish until after the election. And Stormy kept the mouth shut. Be a first for her. I've seen the films. Research purposes. And 105 grand. It's time to be sniffed at, mind you. You could do if you rolled it up first. So let me just sort of give you... It's not illegal in New York to pay someone off to bury a sex scandal. It's not. So they've given her some some lolly. Lolly. And, uh, well, she's come out. Not out, out. Just out. She's come out and said, oh, we didn't. No, we didn't. And these idiots in New York are going, yes, she did. So have they got tapes? Well, I'm, the band have tapes of her. But have they got tapes of the Donald? All sweaty and heaving? Well, Melania was pregnant. She definitely must love him. So, seemingly, there are 24 felonies. No, Adrian, you definitely can't do that gag. And you can't do that one either. You will upset people. Especially YouTube. <laughs> Guidelines. Um, and that's why... Uh, Nicholas Brindley, hey up from Spain. Sorry, Nicola. Nicola Brindley, hey up from Spain. No, yeah, wrong'un. Uh, you're an hour ahead, so please tell me you can't be sunning yourself in Spain. It's pitch black, man. I hope you're in the bars, so to speak. Um, so there's 24 felonies, each carrying a possible four-year jail sentence. Each. So the Donald could be going away for nearly 100 years. It's not going to happen. I think it's a pretty flimsy case and uh, Stormy has previously denied having an affair with the Donald. Trial's gonna last it's four days a week because obviously some of the, the the legal eagles in America are slackers they need to have three day weekends so it's gonna last for four days and six to eight weeks so the next couple of months oh can you imagine literally there it will be everywhere. Give it another week or so till they choose the jury, and then it's going to be everywhere. And he's got to attend every single session of this trial, which means he can't be there for his son's baron gra baron's graduation, which I think is just a bit. Oh, yeah, man! You know the the young lad. He's only ever going to graduate once, and they're just making sure that his dad can't be there. That's just nasty. That's just nastiness personified. And notice how uh, Bill Clinton, William Clinton, was never tried in a court of law. Considering what he knows and he did, made of Jeffrey Epstein, Epstein. Notice how when they were threatening to publish the Epstein list, the Epstein client list, uh, Bill and Killary went off. They went down Mexico way or something just to, you know, buy some sangria or something. I uh, have a, um, a bit of a drive away. Um, but he's not being prosecuted for the Epstein connection. And he was named 
multiple times as visiting Epstein Island and flying on the Lolita Express. Andrew James, you need to know that the Trump always had a prenup when he got married. Oh, clever boy. Clever boy. Do you know the thing that, that really makes me laugh is Trump is possibly just this side or possibly just the other side of a genius. He went to military school. This boy is nobody's fool, multi-billionaire, had half a billion quid in liquidity and all the other stuff. And, and do you know what I'm, uh, I'm always really impressed by is that um, Truth Social was set up now, I don't know whether Donald did this or didn't do this, but I suggest he did. He put it there so that maybe a year or two down the line, if he needed to, to cash it all in for some liquidity, boom, there you go. True social. Who wants to buy it? Oh, I'll have some shares for that, please. Thank you very much. Couple of billion. Brilliant. I mean, it's just because he knows what he's fighting. He's fighting the deep state. Uh, hang on, Napoleon blown apart. I'd rather be deaf and blind than full of that BS for six to eight weeks. Honestly, Napoleon blown apart. Uh, me too. But it's going to be everywhere. Literally everywhere. Because the Democrats want him squashed. They want him gone. Get him gone. Fox on Oscar. Get rid of that Trump guy. We want another four years. We want Barack back in the presidency for another four years. But we've just got to sit at uh, jaw. He'll be dead. You, did, have you seen the video that's going about today? where some woman walked into a bank with a dead guy in a wheelchair. And you can tell this guy's dead. Oh, genuinely, this is, this is genuine. So it was like his carer or something took him into the bank. He died a couple of hours before, took him into the bank and was having a full-blown conversation with him. And the teller on the bank was like, are you sure he's all right? Oh, yeah, he's always a bit pasty. He's, he's got a pasty colour. And they said, well, right, get him to sign the, the cheque then. So she puts the pen in his hand and then has to hold his hand for him to sign. And the teller's like pressing all the emergency buttons under the desk going, there's something really not right here, really not right. And then the cops turn up and go, uh, what's this? She said, what do you mean? Is that man dead? No, 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 he wasn't when we left the house. Oh my God, he's died. Oh my God, he's died. He's, I don't know what to do. I'm in shock. I thought he was just going to sign the check. Oh, my God. I mean, honestly, if you see it online, for me personally, and sometimes my, my humour is quite dark, it's the funniest thing. It's like uh, Weekend of Biden's. I mean, they just wheel him out when they need to or just put some Colombian on his, uh, on his uh, cornflakes uh, just to get him going of a day. So we, d we definitely know that Barack Obama is actually president in everything but name. And that's why they don't want Trump in, because they want to sell all these arms and armaments and make themselves very wealthy, very. Uh, to Neil Cunningham, sounds like an episode of Forty Towers. Oh, I wish. Oh, if, if, do you know, if somebody made it up, a bit like that 60-second pitch to uh, architects, somebody made that up, they'd go, nah, the audience would never believe that. It's on camera. It's like she's been arrested and everything. Uh, personal trainer, Mike. Oh, my God. My my sentiments, exactly. I was looking at the video going, that's like, is it my eyesight? Is it my age thing? Jesus, he's dead. <laughs> it's literally, it is that weekend at um, Wally's or whatever it was, um, where they dragged a, a body around. It was literally just wheeled him in. And the guy's head is flopping back like this and, and all over the place. And the teller's saying to the woman, is he all right? Oh, yeah, he's fine. And so she's having to grab the back of his head by the neck and the, the nape of the neck here and grab his skull and just move it around as if he's sort of sleepy, but still there. Hey, it is creepy, but, I mean, you couldn't write a comedy script with that in. Some people would say, oh, it's Weekend of Bernie's, but it's proper... It might be, it, it might have been shared more by tomorrow morning, but it, literally it will take your breath away. So, where was I? Oh, yeah, uh, the Trump. So, um, how comes Bill Clinton doesn't get fingered? That's Monica Lewinsky. Um, she done, he done, uh, but Donald might have done, might not have done. Stormy came in with a bit of cash. Just generous. He's a multi-billionaire. 
Why couldn't he be? 100 grand, not even a round of drinks to a billionaire. So over the next few weeks, it's going to be everywhere. I'm telling you, it's got all the ingredients for a tabloid feeding frenzy. It's going to be everywhere. Um, I want to ask you a question. And I did print it off, but there they are. So that's the, the, the first couple of questions of the night. Um, I want to ask you this. There's a lady called Catherine Burbal Singh. Burbal Singh. Now, she's the head mistress. There's a gag there. Ask Frank Boff. She's the headmistress of the school which has uh, Michaela Community School. Um, and they've banned prayers. So before I get into the story, if you don't know the story, I'm going to ask you a question. And remember, it's one for yes, two for no. One for yes, two for no. The question is, Catherine Burblesing, was she right to ban prayers at her school? One for yes, two for no. Catherine Burblesing, was she right to ban prayers at her school? The school was Michaela Community School. And she seemingly, according to the press, is one of the strict is one of the strictest head teachers in Britain. Why would they call it head teacher? I used to read the News of the World. Um, she has hailed it as a victory for all schools. But do you think she's done the right thing? Ban prayers at her school. One for yes, two for no. I can't see a single two there. No, my audience. Now, she said, this um, Catherine Burble Singh said, um, we need to call out deep-seated progressive racism. Now, that's very clever because she's saying that this deep-seated progressive racism is racism that is going to be promulgated down the line, that's going to affect the children of that school. Um, Rich says she banned it a while back. The parent knew it before they signed up. But it was it was one of the pupils, one of her own pupils. And they're talking about how much money the legal team for the complainant got. And the, they've said, oh, no, 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 just, you know, um, the, the money that was given by the system is just a tiny little proportion of this. And you just think, oh, here, man, legal aid. Um, Terry Wookfit, um, High Court turned down the pupils' appeal. Oh, lovely. 150 grand. Thank you, Pauline. So, yeah, the legal team said, oh, uh, 150 grand. No, 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 no. Just the legal aid is a tiny little bit of that. Look, you know when I say, how can you tell when a politician's lying? Their lips move. How can you tell? Do you know what lawyers use for contraception? Their personality. Would I believe a lawyer? No. Even less so a barrister. Legal eagles don't even like each other. They're in the same profession. Don't even like each other. So the pupil at the school claimed the ban on prayer rituals was a breach of her human rights and violated the Equality Act. The High Court disagreed. The ban was proportionate and justified. So they turned her appeal down, 150 Gs. Do you know, you never see an impoverished lawyer or barrister, do you? Now, um, Catherine Barbel Singh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. She said, a school should be free to do what is right for the pupils it serves. I couldn't agree more. A school should be free to do what is right for the pupils it serves. Strong leadership, strong boundaries make for great education. And I know there was like a, there was a school in Sunderland maybe 10 years ago, 10, 15 years ago. So they, they surveyed the pupils and they said, what do you want? And the girls went pink and the lads went strong boundaries. And the school went, oh, no, 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 we can't do that. And the lads were like, you asked us what we wanted and we're telling you we want strong boundaries. So this Catherine Barbel Singh absolutely knows what children respond to. None of this woke feckery, nearly swore, apologies. Um, none of this 
woke madness. Let's give kids the best education they can have. And these upstarts that are saying, well, um, you know, I want uh, prayer ritual respected. How do we in shite to another school then? Foxtrot Oscar, you've got free will. You can determine how your education is going to be. Off you go. I think you'll find in these septed aisles, we can also do what we want to do. And in this case, the High Court disagreed with the pupil. Foxtrot Oscar, said the judge. Obviously afterwards, when nobody could record it. Strong leadership, strong boundaries makes for great education. And I take my, my titfer off to uh, Catherine, the head teacher. Love a head teacher. Got me through puberty. So we've done Trump and Catherine Barbel Singh. And honestly, my, uh, oh yes. Can I, can I just tell you? Uh, so I think the majority of the votes went the way of one. Brilliant. Uh, Tadlock Tracy, can you pause the live, please? I need to pee. All right, good half an hour. Don't follow through. Um, I just want to say that um, it, it probably kicked off in January. You know the, the four-part ITV thing? It probably kicked off, was it February? It's a few months ago. And everybody was up in arms quite rightly about the way that the uh, sub-postmasters and the postmasters and, and everyone that was employed in, in post offices were, were being treated and had been treated. And, you know, outrageously... Some of the postmasters lost their lives, committed suicide. Some of them lost, like, life-crushing amounts. 30, 40, 50,000, 100,000 was mentioned at one point. And they're still messing about. I mean, I know Mr. Bates, Mr., not Master, Mr. says, I'm, I'm up against thugs in suits now. They need to pack this in. And then I was just sitting there minding my own business and this little column inch appeared in front of my eyes. Newspaper, column, inch. Yeah, wrong one. So I looked at it and I thought, I can't believe that. Sir On Me Ed Davy has raised his head above the parapet. And he's... Was it the 2nd of January when it was first broadcast? Thank you, Mad Matt. It's now halfway through April. In fact, we're nearly three weeks into April. So there's January, February, March, 12, 15 weeks. His wife must be happy if he goes that slow. And he said... In the newspaper, because it wasn't reported in all of them. It was just like, it obviously left field. And I just looked at it and thought, no, that can't be right. Was that not reported yesterday? I mean, the inquiry's still ongoing. They're still looking into stuff. And I haven't seen um, Ed Davey. Or did I? <laughs> yeah, exactly, Rich. See how she likes it. She probably does. But he's come out and said, look, I've already apologised to Mr Bates. And everybody's gone, hang on a second, has he? Was he? So what he's done is he's just disappeared off the radar and let all of the ordnance fly above his head and then go, right, I'll just pop up when I need to, when it's all died down a bit. Um, and Wizbits, oh, I say, Wizbits, first timer. Um... On the inquiry today, one of the original investigators asked today if if they were if they a son of a convicted post office manager, if they thought Mummy had been nicking money out of the till. Ooh, that's proper cruel. I mean, I, as I say, lawyers and barristers. What do they use for contraception? Their personality. So you know that they're just at it because they can. But let's have a bit of decency about this. We are, we're not dim, but we can see through this 
and some political careers might be flattened because of this. But he didn't apologise either. Wow, Louise. Martin Sullivan, good to see you. I'll still give you your cherry. It's been a while, my friend, a while. Um, Martin did uh, a parody of me <laughs> right at the beginning of the channel. Good to see you back on the on the lives, Martin. Um, the old Marvel Tablock Tracy, you want a, a pee? Can I have a pee, please, Bob? Um, there is a queue in front of you. Oh, very good. Very good. Um, so Sir Ed Davey, he turns around and he says, well, um, I was only in office for 11 days and was asked if I would meet Mr Bates. He's taken four months to respond. So if that was the truth, you'd come out and go, oh, look, here, will you all stop it? I was in, I was in office for 11 days. By the time I've got in for the first day, gone round and, and shook everybody's hand and said hello, there's only 10 days left. I had a week off, three days left, and then I left. Two days. So he said that the difference between a minister, him, and the executives at the post office was that it was an arm's length relationship. I've seen Matt Hancock and those CCTV pictures. That was definitely an arm's length relationship. Couldn't drag his hands away from her derriere. So he said it was an arm's length relationship and the post office executives would deal. The execs knew, this is from Sir Ed Davey, the execs knew there was remote access, so they must have lied to me. Oh, poof. drop them in the shite way, don't you, Sir Ed? So he's just gone, ah, the post office execs must have lied to me. And that would do with me, mate. No, 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 it wasn't me. Didn't see me. Didn't touch anything. That was Matt Hancock. And he said that the lies were on an industrial scale. So he's, he's, he's proper just gone, right, let's work out what we're going to do now. Let's just bomb, boom, drop the nuclear bombs when nobody's suspecting it and blame it all on the post office execs who are an easy target. Well, not as easy as the Lib Dems at the next general election, but still an easy target. Um, and I just think... I don't know whether, do we, should we, let me ask you, I want, I want another question, I want, I want to hear your opinion. So, is this whole inquiry an arse covering exercise? One for yes, two for no. Is this an arse covering exercise? One for yes, two for no. I can't work out who the sacrificial lamb's going to be. It's not Paula Venels. I got told another story about her today. <sighs> I don't know if she's praying hard. I don't. You can get arrested for that. Obviously, being a reverend. Uh, so it looks like. Yes, yes, everyone thinks it's an earth covering exercise. Of course. But who's going to be the sacrificial lamb? Maybe, maybe we should do a, um, a poll. Who do we think is going to be the sacrificial lamb? Well, it's not going to be the postmasters. It's not going to be Mr. Bates. It's not going to be Sir Ed Davey. I was only in office 11 days. I was only in office a short time. You're wrong. Get Sh John Shuttleworth on at Christmas. Sing the orphan song. Thank you, Mick. Yeah, wrong. Uh, Lauren Taylor, Nicholas, Rich. Oh, Fujitsu. You know, they're still getting government contracts. Fujitsu and... Infosys. Oh, I say, Infosys? Well, we all know who Infosys is, don't we, darling? Yes, dear. Rich boys, wives, dads, company. I mean, it sounds quite convoluted, but I've told you before, so long as the politician has deniability, they'll do anything. They're all corrupt, all of them, the whole house. They'll, they'll do anything. I mean, there's Angela Rayner. Bless it, it's only 1,500 quid, but it's coming back to bite her on her ginger bum. And so long as they've got deniability, they will continue to deny. So Infosys can get into the procurement uh, process and can legitimately win government contracts. And all rich boy has to say is, now do a mate, me, me missus, 
and her dad. Got nothing to do with me. Ah, right. So all of the exploratory oil certificates that uh, companies need to explore for oil in the North Sea and, uh, and Infosys has how many of them? And who provided them? Yeah. Tory corrupt government. Oh, uh, just trips off the tongue. Tory corrupt. It just trips off the tongue. Um, I was going to tell you about the uh, the XL bully, but let's get on to, uh, well, something that's a bit funny. Or not, as the case may be. Jimmy Kerr. So... As I say, I was kind of like, oh, I just need something to take my brain out and, and just relax and chill. And I know people say, no, 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 Adrian, you can't, don't be watching, you, you know, blue screen last thing at night. I'll keep you awake. Uh, no, helps me go to sleep. So I started watching this. This Jimmy Carr came up as sort of, you know, when it suggests something that you should really watch. It's the best thing on Netflix. So I thought, oh, we'll give it a go. And he just looks weird. I mean, I don't know whether he's got Botox in his face or what's going on there, but it's almost as if it's a caricature of Jimmy and he's doing it because he's contracted to. And, I mean, I can't speak for him, obviously, but in my view, it was... Jimmy Carr, I switched it off after about 25 minutes. He's about as funny as a kick in the sphericals. And he just comes across as weird. And he's trying to have this interaction with the audience. And that's not funny either. So I don't know whether... I mean, I don't know. If you've watched it, tell me what you think in the comments. Because I just... It just comes across as plastic and odd. Now, I like him doing the game shows. I'm, I've... Um, thought that some of his humour in the past was really sharp, really clever. But last night it was on one or two things. I was thinking, oh, well, that's quite clever. Yeah, that's, that's a clever gag. But holy schmoly. Has anybody watched it? Uh, Nicola Brindley. I, do you know, I think you've hit the nail right on the head there, Nicola. Sold his soul. That's why he looks like a devil. Uh, Tablock Tracy Carr had a facelift, his teeth done, and a hair transplant done privately during COVID. Uh, cost him forty grand. So as he, as he, I mean, I haven't got much of a mind left, but he, he just looks. Do you know if somebody woke up with a plastic face and they got a shock first thing in the morning? It looks like his face has stayed that way all day. And ooh, Mick Rush hologram. Not Insta. Do you know they're saying that... Um, I read something, because I, I know they're doing Kiss, they're doing Elvis. They've obviously, ABBA has done, started it all off. But they're now saying that the way to go is because touring is quite expensive. But if you do this hologram thing, you can make a shed load of money for, like, literally not being there. Just playing PlayStation 5 on your sofa. Andrew James, very good point. Uh... Thing is, all comedians do have a sell-by date. Oh, any comedian that's going to Scotland. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, how are comedians? I mean, Scotland has killed comedy. How can you do any kind of comedy? Because all comedy is tragedy. How can you do that? Because people will go, eh, no, eh, I, I felt, um, no, I didn't like it. It was hate speech. Mick Rush says, bingo, Nicola. Uh, what is that on as well tonight? Get your dibber out. Uh, Rusty Mouse, Tablock Tracy. Yes, absolutely. I don't know what she said now. Is she, is she back from the toilet yet? Um, drop the kids off, Tablock. Uh, GB Patriot, Simon Cowell surgery is worse than Jimmy Carr's. Oh, we can see on, on Saturday. I mean, do we? Do we? Is it like, is it like um, you know, the Romans, if they were getting into trouble, they would just send in the clowns. They would send in the gladiators. Are we meant to watch the telly just to see Simon Cowell's face? See if it has actually melted from sitting too close to the fire. Uh, in the field. Evening in the field. No, I know you were there on Sunday. Um, where's he gone? Venison's deer, isn't it? I was in Barry Venison, used to play for Sunderland. Uh, Andrew James, are you a Kiss fan, double A? Um, no, well, actually, I gave you something on Sunday that nobody's come up with the answer for. Blumfee. Blumfee. 
Uh, um, I did love Rock School with Gene Simmons. I thought that was a great TV show. I thought it was it was quite genuine and quite good. Um, what about Ricky Gervais? Yeah, Ricky's clever. He's very clever. I mean, I loved his when he when he was just ripping Hollywood a new one. He was just fabulous. I mean, just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. But can you imagine Jimmy Carr <laughs> or whatever he does? Um, I can't even do his laugh. Uh, he would stand there and everybody go, oh, who's your surgeon? You need to get a refund. Um, Rich, Ricky is so funny. Watch the clips of him hosting the Globes. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Or oh, you can see, I mean, my favourite is Tom Hanks, where he goes, but it was a gag, Tom. It was a gag. At least he wasn't out and he was a paedophile. No, I'm saying you're not. No, I'm, I'm saying you're not. Uh, Retro's here. Martin, yeah, he's been in all night, man. <laughs> you don't shake retro off easily. Um, retro on his bikes. Uh, love Ricky. He is so naturally funny. I agree. But what they, the best comedy is the clever comedy, where the setup, uh, the payoff is not what you expect from the setup. And Ricky's very clever, so he'll 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 take you down a road and then he'll double blind you, and it just makes you roar with laughter. He's very very clever, very clever. Um, Ooh, Andrew James. Blimey, it's only 24 hours in a day, Andrew. Read all four autobiographies. Does it, do they tell you what a Blumphy is in the autobiographies, Andrew? You're the only one that's going to know. I don't even think Google knows. If it does, it'll probably blow up. Uh, Inky the Cat. Uh, anyone seen uh, Why It's Still Legal, Steve Hughes? That funny bit about being offended. Ooh, no. I'll have to give that a... Um, a definite look. Thank you, Inky the Cat. Um, uh, Adam Well, they call him Woody. Uh, Mick Rosh, uh, little Chris out of rock school, topped himself. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. And little Chris was, uh, he was a fabulous little musician. Obviously, had issues. But I did, this must be nearly 20 years ago for School of Rock and Gene Simmons. But as I said on Sunday, will Gene Simmons ever publish his collection of Polaroids? <laughs> Hello, my name's Diana. Ross, um, personal trainer Mike, you are funny, Adrian. Stop that, I'm being serious. Personal trainer Mike. Try my best. Uh, Martin Sullivan, the management and uh, E Bill Cooney. Hi, Adrian, forgot you were live. Bill from Salford. Hello, Bill from Salford. Um, talking of Salford, can I make sure that um, we've got a, a premiere coming this Sunday afternoon. Uh, Billboard Chris. Now, if you Google Billboard Chris, it'll either go to his website or go to his X account. He's an amazing man with an amazing story. And we're going to tell it Sunday afternoon. Please watch it because it's an amazing story. But as I've said before, I want to do more interviews on the channel. So we'll still be doing the lives. We'll still be doing the videos. We'll still be doing the shorts and we'll be doing all the stuff. We're just ramping things up now. Um, but I have been given the nod to do an interview that I've just been blown away by. Honestly. One of my heroes. And he said yes. So I said to him, uh, all right, then we'll have to we'll have to find uh, uh, somewhere suitable. He said, pub? I said, yeah, why don't we do it in there? Well, let's find a quiet corner and loads of beers. So it could get very, very messy. But <laughs> we're just going to stick a couple of phones um, recording everything. So it could get raucous, fabulous. But I am blown away that he said yes. Um, because I, oh, God, I just honestly... Um, I prepare for all of my interviews. I put a lot of research and work into them so I can give the interviewee the best experience I can and be the best interviewer that I can. I'm very rusty at the moment, so I'm improving very quickly, like I did with these first lives. If you go back and watch the first 10 lives, you'd be like, oh, my Lord, Adrian, you call that alive? Alive, I tell you. Um, so the interviews will get better and better and better, but this one we're going to do in a couple of months. Uh, I'm not going to say any more than what I'm saying tonight. You can ask. I'm not going to tell you. But it's just blown my mind. Proper blown my mind. Because he's got some 
amazing stories. And I'm going to talk to um, two other guys in uh, similar ilk. Uh, they all know me, so, you know, it's, a, it's kind of a friend that's going to be interviewing them. Uh, uh, Inga de Cat. Oh, that would be brilliant, Adrian. Please for you. Uh, who died in... Hang on, Rich. Who died in 1961? I wasn't born until 62, you're wrong. Uh, who's that? Jackie Budden? That would be a cold day in hell. No. Ah, uh, Stuart, you're very kind. Um, you're... Somebody asked for some radio stories, but I'll give you a radio technique instead tonight. And I'm still going to go for, for a lot longer tonight. Pounding on. Um, the, the challenge and the difficulty in, in any radio and in any interview. So if you're going to start a, a podcast up, it takes practice, practice and nerve. So um, it's the old NLP trick, I think. If you just remain silent, and allow people to talk. And you'll see from the interview on Sunday, it was done in real time. I didn't jump in. One breath questions. I'll give you that as a gift. If you can master the one breath question, who, what, when, where, why? If you can master that, you can interview anyone. And don't be afraid. So long as you can support the interviewee and give them the space to say what they feel they need to, to say, and make sure that you have some kind of uh... tar block tracer. Adrian, will you be interviewing the leader of the West Brom Swingers Association? Some stories I can tell thee. Ooh. Well, you never know. So if you are podcasting or getting into podcasting, everybody seems to be doing it nowadays, then if you can master the one breath question, the short, sharp and um, I'll tell you the story here tonight, but I'm not going to repeat this. Um, I was watching, can you remember a film called Manhunter? And it starred Brian Cox as the original Hannibal Lecter, not the, the later Clarice, uh, the, the later Hannibal. It was, uh, it was directed by the same guy that directed Miami Vice. And... There was there's a piece within the film within the Manhunter film, and everybody will try and copy this. But I'm telling you this: it took me ages to perfect this particular uh, skill. So within the film, it's got Brian Cox one side of the bars, and it's got the FBI agent, whoever that was, uh, uh, Michael Mann. Was it Michael Mann? He directed um, this film, the original Hannibal film, Manhunter, and. You've got Hannibal on one side of the bars and you've got, in effect, Clarice, but a male FBI agent on the other side of the bars. And what Michael Mann said he did was every time the FBI agent asked a question, the camera would start to get tighter and tighter and tighter onto Brian Cox and his face. So eventually, after so many short questions and short answers, the bars disappeared in between Hannibal and the FBI agent. And I, I went home, I was on the radio at the time, and I went home and thought, how can I transpose that into a technique? And basically, one breath questions you ask and let the interviewee tell their story and just let it happen. So the more that you ask, the closer you're going to get to the essence of the interviewee. Now, you need to know your stuff. If you're, I don't know, if you're interviewing somebody from radio or TV or as I was, Billboard Chris, um, he has a very specific story. And it's a wonderful story. And he's highly intelligent and very erudite. So you just ask these short questions and it gets you to the essence of the person, the interviewee. So take that if you will. Um, I'm never going to repeat it again because that's a technique. That's why I was successful in radio because I was all the time, I was honing my craft. I was working at my craft. I was looking how to improve it every day, a bit like YouTube. And you'll do the same with your podcast, uh, um, with your YouTube. You'll improve, 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 improve. And it's, it's um, to quote the ninja, 
You are polishing your own stone. You are always polishing your own stone. Uh, what's Stuart said now? Tell that to Piers Morgan. <laughs> Very funny. Very funny, Stuart. Um, so that's Jimmy Carr. Let's get to um, Holly Willoughby and her um, ring of steel. Now, you can make as many gags <laughs> as you want because it just lends itself to proper gags. We are going to talk about the Royals, Dubai Airport, um, and these paediatricians that want to ban smacking. I want to talk about that. The Royals, smacking, Dubai Airport. Um, uh, Holly Willoughby, what I, what I don't understand. Let's have a look. Went to see Melanie too, Dan Payne. Melanie, candles in the wind. That's Elton John, man. Very true about development, AA. Thank you, Neil. Um, what I don't understand about Holly, so Holly's got this ring of steel. Must be a married thing. Um, can I mention this on a family show? Go on, Adrian. We dare you. Frank Boff would have paid good money for that. Being able to crack somebody's ring of steel. Now, Holly says, but back in the papers, and I've got all the newspapers. I've literally got stacks and stacks and stacks. And like the other day, I was doing a piece on... Who was it? On Hugh Edwards. So I got all my Hugh Edwards newspapers out. Just took a shot of the front going, oh, I, for I forgot that. Yeah, remember that. So Holly, um, in fact, I've got, should I do this? Yeah. So I've got a, an excerpt from the Metro newspaper from when it was all kicking off late last year. Now, Holly said she wouldn't leave home due to alleged threats to her life. She said, I'm not leaving home. I'm not coming out. I'm not going to play because there's been threats made to my life, which at the time, the reportage had named people and people were were um, being talked to about it. But now she's heading to Costa Rica, one of the most violent countries in the world. How much is it costing for her ring of steel? Definitely not telling that one. Um, hang on. <laughs> hang on. E Bill, where did you get the mugs? Where's where's it? Hang on. I'm gonna have to have a look at that later. Thank you, Retro. So she's saying, oh well, you know, and now they're spending millions on security. Now I I've told you that Holly is managing herself, her and her hubby Dan are managing herself because she's not managed by anybody else. She's the consummate. PR girl, consummate. I mean, it's almost bordering on genius. So now she's doing millions spent on security. We're going to Costa Rica, flying out in a couple of weeks. It's all layered. It's all building up and building up and building up. And it'll be, I don't know, it'll be aired sometime in 2025. But they're out in Costa Rica um, to record it. And for some inexplicable reason, those of a certain age will understand the name that I'm about to give them. So she's having a ring of steel, a cordon around her. And I just thought of Duncan Norvell saying, chase me, chase me. I'll leave that with you. Some people are going, what the hell is he talking about now? Um, and the other question I have is, are we going to get like Annika's bum shots? Uh, I mean, are we chasing Holly through the jungle? Or is she going to do the Wim Hof thing and not going to jump in the cold water? That's for the celebs to do. I love Wim Hof. I love the Wim Hof method. I do, genuinely. Tried it, love it. Um, so it's all kind of, it's all fluff and nonsense. And it's all in the papers. Uh, she's always, it's Holly in her nice dress. I mean, it's almost a quote, daily quote now. N not latex, like uh, what's-her-face, Amanda Holden. And uh, and the other A, whose name I can't remember. Um, she'll love me. Um, hang on, Napoleon Blown Apart. Britain's longest pop band, long, longest running pop band, The Searchers, has spoken about coming back out of retirement for a brand new tour. And this time, it really could be their last. Yeah, right. Um, but artists now make their money from touring. They don't make it from you buying bits of plastic. Although, have you seen the price of an album nowadays? It's literally an arm and a leg. Oh, it's got to be 180 grams, Adrian. Yeah, stuff you. Back in the 70s and 80s, when I was buying vinyl, <coughs> and I still have, I've got loads of it, I wasn't going, 
Is that 180 grams? That, that can't be so. If it's not 180 grams, well, then stuff it. I'll chuck it in the bin or warp it, make it into a, can, a pot holder, plant pot holder. Um, no, but... Um, hang on. Martin Sullivan. That is actually very funny. Where do I find the searches? Terry Wookfit. Holly will be hosting. She isn't going to be chased, nor is she chasing. She's not the chaser, nor the chasee. So we're not going to get any Annika bum shots. Ugh, what's the point of watching? Oh, there are lots of green leaves. It's Costa Rica. Cocoa plant. Not the cocoa, the coca. I said this on, on Sunday's live. In Peru, the locals revere the coca plant, C-O-C-A. And I was like, well, you, you can... You can make drinks from it. And the guy was like, yeah, you can. If you want to go up that side of that mountain rather quickly. What do you mean? Well, that's what they make the marching powder from. What do you mean? And he said, well, it's a coca plant. That's what they... So they're in Costa Rica. If they start running around rather quickly, we'll know. Uh, Andrew James, got a seaside. Hi all, beautiful day here on the seaside. So not stopping, you're wrong and seaside. Uh, we'll catch up on replay this evening after dinner. Oh, seaside's not of this particular parish, but is always welcome into the body of the Kirk. Uh, Stuart, close the other title. Yeah, got it. Uh, Nicholas, I have a signed seven inch. Time is tight. Tight's always good. See you, Millie, for a seven inch. Uh, Mick Rush, Holly is like the Queen. Someone dressed her vinyl dear these days. It's like 20 odd quid a, uh, an album. And Jimmy Page has not been in touch. I'm gutted. I was a fan. Not now. For those that were there at the live last week, uh, I had Jimmy Page on Facebook trying to get some money out of me. 300 quid. It was $300. Yeah, right. You can look at this face, face for radio, and you can tell I'm a cynical old tart. No, he didn't get any money out of me. Uh, Mick Rosh, Costa Eureka. Now, we've done Holly. We might get back to her, but I want to... Have you seen... Oh, that's what I was going to do. I was going to... Uh, this was um, a little something that I knocked up because there's nothing better than a quick knock-up. Uh, God, but I mean, this must have been like November last year, straight out of the Metro newspaper. I'm going to read it verbatim because rem remember this new Netflix show for Holly, she's got a ring of steel. No, can't tell that gag. Honestly, you'd wash my mouth out with soap. Um, so Holly said she was surprising new update from the Metro newspaper. Holly Willoughby considering surprising low-key new job. My hairy backside. So um, the 42-year-old presenter announced her decision to quit the ITV show after 14 years in an Instagram post dubbing it a difficult goodbye. We'll still be up there then. This comes after her former long-time co-host, Philip Schofield. Remember him? The Schof? Unwise but not illegal. And the only photographs that you get of him nowadays are with him and his growler. Or his mother. Slowly. Mum don't walk very fast. Obviously taken by his daughter. Or a member of the family, certainly. So uh, Scove left the show in May after admitting to lying about having an affair with a younger colleague. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Now, Holly, who explained she made the decision for her and her family, is said to be considering a career out of the spotlight. Eh? Well, she's already done Dancing on Ice. Word was she was going to do Hubby Dan's Gladiators on the BBC, and now she's off to record uh, Netflix for 2025. And she said back in November that she was considering a career out of the spotlight. My hairy backside. The TV star already runs wellness and lifestyle brand Wild Moon, with an E, and is said to be thinking about expanding her skills in this area. Well, I massage, Holly. A source said the star is considering a role in coaching and therapy as this last year has changed what she wants out of life. A million quid from Netflix is what she wanted. 
Although Holly adores presenting, this new suspected career path includes her favourite part of this morning. Getting a gob full. No, sorry, uh, the phone-ins. The source also explained how Holly loves giving advice at a million pound a pop. <clears throat> Can't tell you that gag. Honestly, Adrian, you potty mouth tart. Plus, she's always seen amongst her friends as the go-to for advice. So she's been thinking of life coaching or training as a therapist of some sort. <coughs> <coughs> oh, really? The source told the publication. They continued, with everything she's been through, Holly's really felt the benefits of mindfulness and talking to others about how she's feeling. Here, Nate, Foxtrot Oscar. It's also made her question her life in the spotlight and she'd maybe like to live a bit more low key with a primary focus on helping others and getting a million pound a pop from Netflix. Honestly, that's the shite that they print in the newspapers. That was like November, when everybody's like, is she going to do Dancing and Ice? Well, there's Dan. He's done gladiators. And that's gone uh, quite swimmingly. And now she's, uh, she's kicking about with Bear grills in, in the jungle. And her ring of steel. I mean, if she gets into trouble, that might be a bit of a hairy ring of steel. So I've told you before, I don't, I don't believe a thing that they print in the bloody newspapers. No, not even the price on the front. Um, have you seen uh, Dubai? They had a year's worth of rain in 24 hours. I mean, that's proper dinghy weather. Actually, there's a few people in this country that we could have flown out there and given them a hand. Uh, Dubai airport, airplanes grounded. They're not taking off, they're rowing boats instead. I mean, can you imagine? Oh, hello, Mr. Allen. You're here for, uh, well, no, you've got no chance of that. No, no, you're not taking off. Do you want to go for a swim? Got some goggles and shorts for you. Flip-flops. It's like six foot deep. But, you know, I, I'm not one to um, take the mickey out of uh, other people's misfortunes. But there's loads of people that I know are like, oh, one of my friends... He's got to go out far, far east, and he flew into Dubai, and it was like, holy Jesus, what's going on? Do I need a, a pair of goggles and a snorkel to get off the plane? And it, so he's like three days he's been there. Three days. Another one tomorrow. I mean, maybe we should get all those elephants that are fighting with lions. Just get them to um, suck. <laughs> oh, Adrian. Yeah, mucky tart. So I was just going to say all the elephants can just suck it up. <clears throat> no, I can't. I can't. I'll get told off again. Um, but can you imagine all the all the water that those um, those elephants can suck up? They've got a lot of sucking power. Um, so I'm told. Um, let's get to something serious. Because I, I know we've had a bit of a um, jolly this evening. But I want to get to some... Um, a couple of things. One, the Royals, but two, poor Nigel Farage. We'll get to him in a second. Poor Nigel. I mean, who'd want to be a politician? Not Nigel. Um, I think we should go with... Yeah, I want to know uh, another question. Should smacking be banned? One for yes, two for no. Agincourt. One for yes, two for no. Should smacking be banned? And please vote... Well, I tell you about this. So, I was listening to LBC this morning. Just I got out to to get the morning papers. LBC National Radio Station, wonderful. Um, and Nick Ferrari, obviously, I I know Nick from working at LBC, and he was he was talking to this professor. Now you would think that somebody who's a professor would know what the deal is. Let's have a look at this. Ooh, interesting. Should we ban smacking? And most of it is a no. Wow. I mean, I know I, I, sometimes I'll, I'll take the mickey and say, I, I know my audience. But it, was, <clears throat> it wasn't a really, it was a fair interview, but this professor just wasn't for 
it was almost as if it was AI. It wasn't for no emotion. He's a professor, he's um, esteemed. But they're wanting to change the law. Now, look what happened with the jibber-jabber four years ago. Loads of people were made to take it. You're taking it. You're taking it. And all these people that were, that were putting on their update on Facebook, oh, I've had my jibber-jabber. I've had my the fucking moral indignation from these people. I've had my jibber-jabber. Oh, sorry. I swear there. Apologies. Um, and I just thought, here, stuff you. Fox Dr. Oscar. I'm not interested. And as a friend, oh, honestly, stick your head up your backside, man. So in this, in this, I had to stop the car to listen to this interview. The paediatricians, the National Organisation of Paediatricians, are urging a change of the law to make smacking children illegal. And my first response, I don't know how you feel about this, but like with the jibber-jabber, it's, it's the government. The government are now our grandparents, our parents and our children's parents. So they are parenting the pastoral care, if you will, the whole of the bloody country. And then they make a law where, no, you can't smack your child. Now, the, the, they had a woman on, uh, a mother, who was like, look, my, my child doesn't respond to anything other than a light tap on the bum. Because my child's three-year-old and it's just laughing at me. If I say you can't do that, you'll burn yourself. Just laughs at me. And I only use the light tap to say, you'll hurt yourself unless you don't do that. And no, well, Ingie de Kant makes a very good point. She thought it already was. Uh, and it is in Scotland and it is in Wales, but Northern Ireland and England, it's not illegal. And Nick very fairly was sort of using another radio te technique, a very simple one of, of cutting an interviewee's exits off. And I thought my initial reaction was, why not put something in place to support parenting? So reverse it, not these paediatricians. Oh no, no, that's abuse, that's child abuse. No, you can't smack them, no. We've told you, you can't smack children, so do as you're bloody told. And, and you think, hang on a second, why don't you put things in place to support parents? It's a hard enough job as it is, it's a bad enough job as it is, and you just hope that what you try to do means that when they grow up into their 20s and 30s, they have the requisite skills to be able to na navigate life. And then this paediatrician's like, no, you bloody won't. We'll make it illegal. It should be illegal. It should be illegal now. And I was like, well, you fox don't ask me it. No, it shouldn't. You should be putting, th you're a paediatrician. Why don't you put things in place to support parents in their endeavours? The good parents, I mean, there's obviously going to be idiots. There always is. In every walk of life, I heard one on the radio this morning. So you, you, why not put something in, in place to support parenting? Instead of making the state responsible for parenting. Am I, I'm, I'm genuinely asking you, am I wide of the mark here? Um, I've never had kids, but I've seen children out of control and My sisters have had kids. All my friends have had kids. I was too busy enjoying my career. But I look back and thinking, God, I would have ended up in prison. You can't smack kids. Well, how do you discipline them? You can't negotiate with a terrorist. You, getting down to a three-year-old's eye level going, oh, here, mate. They're just laughing at you. They're terrorists. How can you give them any discipline? Two gits in a car. Um, so smacking and shaking, more importantly, has been made illegal in Wales since 2022. 
Scotland the same since 2020. So it's only the last, a bit like when all the, the, the nonsense was going on with the jibber jabber. Now, the Royal College of Paediatrics and Child Health said simplifying the law is long overdue. So they're going to sneak it in by the back door, these backdoor merchants. We know what they're all up to, bloody soggy biscuits and, and backdoor action. So they're saying, no, 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 no. You don't do that. We are the professionals. We're the experts. We know more, more than you. Like a mum who's carried the child for nine months, not these idiots, carried the child for nine months, given birth in, in all of its hues and glory and, and multicolours. And they're trying to say to a mother, you don't know your child, therefore you can't smack your child. Um, Rich says, my teacher had two pumps, Fred and Frieda, one for the girls, one for the boys. I had so much respect for that teacher, I went to his funeral five years ago. Pumps? Oh, you mean sand shoes. Trainers. I mean, I was... Look, I'm not... I was never a normal pupil at school. I was on report all the time. I'd get to... I'd be, be on report for like three weeks and you had to get a tick saying you were good in the lessons. This is my, in my secondary education. And, and yes, uh, of course, I'm embarrassed. I wish I'd been able to go to university. But back in the day, my mum and dad didn't have the money for me to go to university. So I got a trade instead. But they were... They were leathering the absolute bejesus out of me. They'd say to the, the, the class, anybody got any sand shoes? Trainers. Who's got the biggest sand shoes? Right, Alan, bend over. It's like, they did that in schools nowadays. Perverts. In fact, at this age, if they were saying bend over, Alan, I'd be like, he's a porn star, sir. You do anything like that to me and I'll rip your arms off and shove the soggy ends up your ass." Say that, Simon Bates once. And... It looks like the Marxist idiots are taking over the world. You can say left wing if you wish, but that's not accurate enough. And you've got all the other bits and pieces. And this Royal College of Paediatrics telling you, the person that gave birth to that child, loves that child more than life itself, a mother's love. And they're telling you, we're going to make it illegal for you to smack the kids. And I've known some parents who it's hurt the parents more than the child when they've disciplined the child. And what they're saying is they're trying, um, they're saying that a lack of clarity can add an extra layer of complexity in identifying child abuse. Can you see what they're doing? They're saying that it's child abuse. No, it's not. Take it from me. I know what fucking child abuse is, and it's not smacking a child. I could tell you stories that would make your hair curl. And these paediatricians, these clever, worldly, cleverly spoken idiots. Now, I, please, I, I will preface this. Well, not preface, I'm virtually finished. I will add a little addendum. Child abuse should not be suffered by any child under any circumstances. But I believe that we as a community, a worldwide community of human beings, humankind, why don't we do things to actually support parents? Rather than say, it's against the law. Well, do you know something? Ask Michelle Moan. She got VIP treatment and wandered off with tens of millions of our taxpayers' money by these cleverly spoken professors. Seemingly the intelligentsias in the, the Pink Palace. Here, Fox, not Oscar, mate. And then they're saying, no, we're going to take that responsibility away from parents because parents will just abuse their children. What on earth? Which planet are they living on? Planet Zog? Space cadets, a lot of them. Now, talking to space cadets, as we were, sorry, I get very, I get very passionate about certain things. And, and maybe one day I'll tell you my stories, but it would have to be late at night. 
I jailed one of them for 36 years. I can out misery anybody. But I don't bring it here because sometimes I just, I, I come here for a bit of a giggle, shits and giggles, and uh, and talking about the Royals, as we're going to. Um, Nicholas, Adrian, we had an ex-World War II pervert who would make us bear our bums and give us Black Sam on the bum, boys. Girls, if you were on the losing team in PE. Oh, yeah, loads of them. I mean, there was always, I don't know about your school, but there was always rumours about particular teachers and you just went, don't go anywhere near them. Because they just love Terry Wookfit, Space Cadets, 2214. Yeah, about that. Um, two gits in a car. Uh, snack never, oh, smack never did me any harm, neither. Did the cane at school and neither did the wooden spoon. Mum kept it in her handbag as a deterrent. What for you or for other men? Um, I, I mean, I remember getting the, the cane and... God, he always, always used to just catch the end of your fingers. Fucking hell. Even now, think about it. It's painful. But I remember, I, 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 just, I wasn't your ordinary pupil because I was just a bit full of piss and vinegar when I was a kid from the, the abuse. And back in the day, nobody ever took, and nobody ever said, oh, he's, uh, he's obviously, uh, oh, came up with some medical condition. It Just what he was, what it was. Look, I, I came from uh, either... Steel, foundries, shipyards or mines. That was my future. And I was in, I was in German. I, and I used to love German. I was very good at it. And my German teacher was a bit of a looker. Miss Noon, if you're watching. Oh, you dirty tart. And she used to come in to the class and wear these, these roll neck tops with, uh, some people call them hickeys, I call them love bites, just these red marks around her neck. And, I, and she just... She was forever, ever, ever having a go at me. And I hated it because my previous German teacher was just legendary and genius and wonderful. And she just, anyway, she came into the class one day and I was having a bit of a daydream. I was just looking out the window and she said to me, Alan, what are you doing looking out the window? I said, it's more bloody interesting than this lesson. And she went, how dare you? Ra 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 ra. And I said, Ia, the next time your boyfriend's hungry, take him to the feckin' chip shop rather than him eat your neck. Well, what can I say? I was ordered down to the headmasters. The rest of the class, I went uproar, <laughs> in absolute uproar. She didn't like it because she knew what I was talking about. Dirty tart. Coming into school with love bites on her neck, trying to teach 13 and 14 year olds. Feck off! Slut! Are you watching, Miss Noon? I remember well. Verbatim. And most of my um, cohorts in the class will repeat it verbatim. So I went down to the headmaster's um, office and I thought, oh, here we go, I'm going to get the cane again. Um, and he said, Alan, what are you doing down here? I said, oh, Miss Noon, sir. She's come into class with loads of love bites on her neck. She's trying to cover them up with uh, with one of those roll neck jumpers, but I've told it like it is, and she wasn't best happy. He said, oh, oh okay, Alan, uh, can you uh, can you just disappear? So oh, I can go home. Yeah, oh, absolutely, I'll go home. He said, no, 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 go up to the music practice rooms and practice your cello or something. Um, just keep it out of the way. And I never went back to her class, ever. Because obviously, the dippy tart, she said, uh, well, I'm not having him back in my classroom. And I'm like, I'm not going back in a classroom. So <laughs> it was daggers drawn. But she didn't come back into school with any love bites on her neck. Hopefully she took him to the, the chip shop. I said to her, I said to her, um, why, didn't, um, why didn't you take your boyfriend to the chip shop? What happened? Did, he, did you get trapped in the door? And I mean, she couldn't teach the class afterwards because I just, no quarter given, no quarter taken. Told you, I was a bit of a wrong'un when I was in school. Loved it though, loved it. The teachers didn't like me sort of telling it like it is, a bit like here, a bit like on the radio. But teachers nowadays, they're just weak, man. Uh, trying to get a teacher to inspire your kids, but smacking, I, I kind of get the flavour from what you've said tonight. Hang on a second, what's that? Uh, Inky the cat. Pauline was horrible. She kept touching plug and thought it was a game. Moore said no, so she laughed, and I was scared she'll do it in someone else's house. She never touched it again. Oof. 
there's all, I mean, how do we empower? Because there's lots of really good parents. There's some wrong ones, but there's lo and grandparents. Grandparents have no legal basis whatsoever. There's loads of good grandparents. Now, I, uh, it seems like that um, there's just millions and millions and millions of wrong ones messing with kids, mostly vicars, but... Tell you what, let's leave that there because it'll just uh, uh, it'll just wind me up for the rest of the night, and I'd rather be proportionate, appropriate, and measured. Let's talk about the royals. Oh, go on, dare me, dare me, go on. Um, so Big Willie's back tomorrow. I know they said um, April twenty seventh. Um, yes, um, um, Catherine, Princess of Wales, will uh, will be back on royal duty April twenty seventh, and then all of a sudden, like today, it's oh, Big Willie's back. Big Willie's back. Hang on, he's back tomorrow. That's like a week early. What's wrong with him? He's been slacking for three weeks and then he, he wants to make out that he's busy getting jiggy with it. So, have you heard about H&M? Not the shop where you buy clothes, you're on. Mick Roche, at 14, I had a 24-year-old I was seeing teacher got jealous, dragged me into the office and said I was being nonced. I was of sound mind and, well... Teachers just weren't. I know. Oh, it, 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 bad enough. Look, if you were a teacher in Sunderland, you were dealing with comprehensive kids. Fair dues to you. You deserved a medal uh, as big as a bin lid. But don't take me on when you've got love bites. I was like a ring. Are we back to Holly's ring of steel again? Um, so Netflix chief for uh, H&M has said, uh, well, you know, um, H&M have launched two new Netflix shows. You may love them, you may hate them, but you're watching. I think you'll find, mate, we're not. You can tell you're not in Blighty because we don't give a flying about them. We're fed up with them. So there's Megan. She's got this new idea. Oh, let's have a think, let's have a think. Let's have, how can we, Harry, Harold, how can we make money? Well, you can. I can hire you out for, by the half hour. Stick you on some ships or something. No, why don't we copy the Duchy of Cornwall? What do you mean, darling? Well, let's just copy the king, not your dad. <laughs> the king! So do you know what's coming next? Don't. I know that's a comedy opening, and I know you've probably got a very good comedy, comedy opening. Adrian, 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 they will take you out and thrash you if you start making these gags up. Um, but there's going to be jam wars. Jam wars! Can you imagine? This, her, her company, that um, is like the Duchy of Cornwall, is called American Riviera Orchard. What the bloody hell's that when it's at home? American Riviera Orchard. Apple bobbing anyone? So, Charles, Charles, uh, the Prince of Wales, Charles, from the Duchy of Cornwall's estate, they've been selling a conserve um, in top grocery stores, not on my estate, they haven't, uh, for, since 1990. That's like 35 years almost. And, uh, and what young Meghan is doing is a batch of 50 numbered jars. Sending him out to influencers and influencers are taking pictures. Well, it's 2024. Um, yes, um, what, what oh? Um, I've got number uh, 17 of 50. Oh, right, all right then. Big Willy style. Start flaunting at them. We don't care what it looks like. We want to know what it tastes like. Not Megan, you're wrong in the jam. So, Santa Barbara in California, has been known as the American Riviera for goodness knows however long. It's not the Riviera, it's not Europe. It's California. Now, seemingly, a US trademark application reveals there are plans for online stores. This is the, the, the applied for it. The, the Archwell, Archetype's Archwell. And so they're going to sell tableware, 
Oh, you can get a posh. Downton. Uh, glasses, decanters, kitchen linens, foods such as jams, marmalades, oils and spreads. But let me tell you, there are members of the body of the Kirk that love their Bovril. They're not selling Bovril. How very dare. And you know what? For all their selling jams and marmalade, oils and spreads, they're no Horlicks tablets. Let me just let you have that. Yeah, wrong one. So, Harry, uh, this is the bit that I wanted to get to, and I'll, I'll kind of round it off with this. But Harry, do you know what he's up to? Do you know what he's, do you know what he's doing? Do you know what he's doing? He's lost the case, the appeal. Hey, I'm going to take it to a higher court. What, a Martian? Are you going to take it to Mars and get Mars to, to rule on it? How do we end shite, man, Harry? So, um, I'm not paying any money back because that's not what we do. I'm the royal family. I don't pay for anything. Well, I think you'll find, Harold, you do. Like a million quid's worth. So, <coughs> cough. Polo in Wellington. How much keeping up those horses does it cost? Give us that money. Hang on, what's Pauline doing? I'll have to have a read of those later. So, um, I seem to remember, like um, uh, Archwell, weren't they working with David Furness, Elton John's husband? to come up with some telly stuff. And he's like a producer. Well, she's not. They're Harry's kids, not hers. Didn't produce anything. But Harry doesn't want to cough up the million. He just wants the taxpayers to pay for it. Me and you. I graft for my money. And me taxes. It's mad, I tell thee. Mad. So, that's enough for, for one Wednesday evening. Don't forget, smash the likes before you go. You're wrong and I've given you this for free. Smash the likes. And don't forget, I am on X at Adrian Allen. I'd love to see you over there also. And make sure that you are subscribed. There's more videos coming first thing in the morning, already recorded. Just needs a, a little edit and then it'll be uploaded first thing in the morning. But most of all, thank you for your interaction. Thank you for being here. Thank you for um, all your messages and all your votes. But most of all, thank you for your indulgence. My name's Adrian Allen. And just for your entertainment on Sunday, I'll bring a bit of Battenberg. See you Sunday at 8. Video's coming in the morning. Be well, sleep well, and I'll see you tomorrow.